It gives me a great pleasure to announce the All Blacks squad for the Vista 2017 All Blacks Northern Tour to the UK and France. The touring squad is Asafo Amor, Wellington, Bowden Barrett, Taranaki, Scott Barrett, Taranaki, Sam Kane, Bay of Plenty, Dane Coles, Wellington, Wyatt Crockett, Canterbury, Ryan Crotty, Canterbury, Matt Duffy, North Harbour, Via Fafita, Wellington, Jack Goodhue, Northland, Kane Hames, Tasman, Nathan Harris, Bay of Plenty, David Harvili, Tasman, Rico Ioani, Auckland, Jerome Kaino, Auckland, Tara Kerbalo, Waikato, Nepo Lalala, Counties Manukau, Nani Lamapi, Manawatu, Anton Leonard Brown, Waikato, Damien McKenzie, Waikato, Waisaki Naholo, Taranaki, TJ Peronara, Wellington, Tim Perry, Tasman, Karen Reed, Counties Manukau and Captain, Luke Romano, Canterbury, Adi Savia, Wellington, Aaron Smith, Manawatu, Lima Sopoanga, Southland, Liam Squire, Tasman, Seta Tamanivalu, Taranaki, Cody Taylor, Canterbury, Matt Todd, Canterbury, Geoffrey Tor Manga Allen, Wellington, Patrick Tuipolotu, Auckland, Offa Tongafasi, Auckland, Samuel Whitelock, Canterbury, and Sonny Bill Williams of Counties Manukau. Congratulations from New Zealand Rugby to all those selected for the tour, especially uh, the new All Blacks. So special congratulations to Tim Perry, uh, Asafo Amoa, Jack Goodhue, and Matt Duffy, who will have just heard the news as live as you are. So they're very excited. Congratulations to them. And to all the fans, I hope you enjoy uh, watching the tour. After the Barbars game, um, we're going to uh, include five players who will come with us from the Barbarian side uh, to take part in the Leon French game. It'll be Dylan Hunt, Artu Moli, Mitch Drummond, Richie Mwanga and Dominic Bird. Uh, they'll take part in that game, as I said, and then after that they'll return back to New Zealand. And the last feature of, albeit a minor one, we'll have six players who <coughs> won't uh, take off on Friday. Uh, they'll spend some more time at home. Um, five of them are, are married with children, so they're getting a bit of a break with, at home. Kieran Reid, Dane Coles, White Crockett, Sam Whitelock, and Sonny Bill Williams, uh, along with Albie, who's had a, a pretty big year uh, been involved in a lot of games, so we'll just give him an extra week to get him a bit of a breather. They'll join the team on the Friday of the Barbarians week and get ready to um, be available for the French test. So, open to any questions. Steve, um, Matt Duffy, what do you particularly like about him? Yeah, he's a very good finisher, he's got pace, he's good in the air, uh, he can play wing or fullback. Uh, and he's got a sense of maturity about him that um, I think will fit in very well with what we're trying to do at the moment. Steve, do you see elements of Ben Smith in, in that side? Uh, yep, yep, I do. Um, you know, it's a, it's a big comparison though. I mean, uh, Matty's had an interesting uh, football career, uh, taking in both codes, and um, you know, he's, he's done well coming from the Stormers after a lot of injuries. I know they didn't want him to to go, they rated him very highly, uh, but over the last couple of years he's just grown and grown and um, you know, he's become very consistent. Well the opportunity of this tour, um, you know, the Barbarians game and the, and the second French game, uh, just gives us an opportunity to play someone like him. We need, we need four hookers and he's the obvious young up and comer and um, gives him a Rather than being an apprentice, he he, uh, he gets to <coughs> tour and play. He's pretty special, so uh, we'll see where he goes. Steve, um, 
Yeah, to be really honest about that, um, if, if we were really clear on who the next halfback after that would be, we probably wouldn't have, but we're not. And he is a good player. Um, you know, he, he's a standout All Black. I think he's been very unlucky to have competed in the same era as Aaron Smith and TJ. He would have played a lot more Test matches. Um, there's not a lot between those three. Um, so uh, he's contracted until the end of it, and our job is to pick the right team uh, the best team we can for New Zealand and, and the All Blacks, and that's what we've done. So if we tempted to take another half-back at all? No. No, we've, we've got the best of both worlds because we get the opportunity to see um, Gus Pichot, or not Gus Pichot, Augustine Pulu play um, <laughs> for the Barbarians. Can't play for Argentina and the All Blacks. Um, uh, for the Barbarians against Australia on Saturday, and then we get the opportunity to see Mitch Drummond uh, against us um, if they pick him, and then we can use him. Uh, so, so I think we've uh, we've got the best of both worlds there. So the five players from the Barbars are likely to see game time again. Well, they'll be in the 23 for sure. Yeah. And the reason we've done that is we just don't want to go Test match Tuesday Test match. It's not great for preparation. We we think Scotland are going to be a really tough. Uh, encounter and we want people to be fresh as they possibly can be. Uh, he's really good scrummager. He's um, been around a long time and uh, understands uh, uh, what's required um, up in that front row um, position and, and his core skills are pretty good so we've just got to develop him the rest of his game. Just on a, I'm aware is that I mean, do you, is it a kind of thing with him being so young and you're just not you know, bringing through at a nice easy pace or what, what's your thinking on him? Well, we'll just do what we do with every new All Black. We'll make sure that he's ready to go when he goes and, and how much he gets will depend on how ready he is. And he's, he seems to be a pretty mature young man. Um, <coughs> he's playing well at, at uh, might a 10 uh, level and he's done well in the under 20. So he's got an opportunity now to spend some time with uh, three good hookers and um, and learn from them and, and he'll get a little bit of game time. So uh, the future is probably where his um, his career will be, but uh, right now we'll, we'll get to know him and uh, that'll be important. You've said before, Steve, that you find it very hard sometimes to gauge a player's talent based on one of ten cup because you believe that there is a drop-off. What is it about his play at that level that tells you that he should be able to step up to a position? Uh, well, he's dominating. He dominates when he carries. He, everything he does, he's, he does really, really well and stands out. So uh, that, that's not normal for a 20-year-old. So when you see non-normal behaviour, which is positive, um, it's not too hard to reward it. What's Seta done to, to impress you? Has it just been that position change for you? Uh, well, maybe Foz can answer that question. He's sitting there. Weekend at Bernie's if you don't ask him one, so. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. Yeah, no problem, mate. Um, oh, I think it's, uh, I think the move to wing's been great for him. You know, I think particularly he's, it's, uh, look, he's a strong runner, he's, he's an offloader, so he keeps the ball alive <coughs> in that outside channel, and and also aerially, he, he's excellent. You know, like he, he chases a lot of kicks, catches them, and and that part of his game has been pretty significant, which we haven't never really seen when he's playing centre. So clearly he can play both, but I think moving out to the wing is, it certainly looks like his best position. Steve, you sent Julian Sunday back to play provincial rugby. He's played pretty well. Has he not played well enough for you guys? Or no, 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 we're really happy with how he's going, but it's a long-term plan with Jules. Um, <coughs> he and his partner or wife are due to have a baby shortly, so... We want him to have a big off season, um, so those two things combined with us thinking that well, st stick with the plan and, and uh, let's have a look at some other people. Yeah, he's fine. Yep, yep. Um, no, no regular talent that discussion going? Oh, it was a tough discussion because uh, you know he he. I'm sure he and Nicky would love him to be here, but uh, things are such that he's not, and, and there's no pressure from us. I mean, when he's ready, he'll be back, and 
and um, you know the key thing is it's about them and um, you know we talk about being a family so we're just being supportive and when he and Nicky are ready to to get um, back into rugby then that's what will happen. I know it didn't affect your selection of 37 but the loss on Saturday, how does that change your mindset going into it? Does it change it at all? Oh you're a little uh, grumpier than you were the day before the loss I should suggest but it hasn't changed our philosophy on the tour, no. Does it mean players are cranky? You're cranky heading Well, if you lost the game, Andrew, would yeah. you be a bit cranky? Yes. Yeah, well, there you go. You've answered the question yourself. <laughs> Everyone's got a little rock under their towel and a wee itch. And until we get to play another game, uh, that, that'll be there. So we've got a fortnight to be feeling like that, and that won't do us any harm. And does the wee itch also move over from the Lions series to Wales? Playing against Wales? No, no. It's not the Lions, it's Wales. So it's a different. It's a, you know, each, each test has got to be taken on, well, each game has got to be taken on its own merits and, and recorded the respect that it deserves. And you know, every time you pull on the All Black jersey, there's, a, there's an opportunity to, to um, enhance what's gone on before. And you know, our next opportunity is the Bar Bars. We didn't have a great game against Australia, and there's a lot of things we've got to fix up. So. That'll be our focus, and then after the Barbos game, we'll look at how we went there and and continue to try and get better. We've got a big squad of people, and uh, they'll need to be managed properly, and uh, it's going to be a real challenge, but something we're looking forward to. Steve, how do you manage the, the coaching side of it, particularly that, that Tuesday game? Do you give the gentleman to your right a little bit more reins, or do you still have that control? Well, he's got all the reins anyway. He does, he does it all. Um, now look, we, we've sat down with the coaching group and uh, planned out the whole tour about how we want to do things and there's, there's ro not really a need to uh, change our weeks. Um, just means, you know, our, as coaches we'll probably have to do a little bit more on the same day uh, and split the two teams a couple of times. But by and large, yeah, um, everyone's just, management will have to work a bit harder. Uh, the players will just, it'll be just life as normal for them. Scott yeah, well, I got an email off him straight after the Aussie game, so I, I, I think he's pretty excited, yeah. Can you discuss what was in the email? G'day, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else underneath? Well, it's quite a bit, but I, no, I can't discuss that. Ian, um, just back to Matt Duffy, he's, he struck me as being a, <coughs> an old kid on younger shoulders and a, and a professional. You, yeah, certainly. Saw a, saw a lot of them during the uh, the Blues campaign. At Super Rugby, we were able to spend a lot of time around there and watched them train and 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 watched them study the game. And like he's 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 a thinker, and you could just tell that he had a really good work ethic off the park. And 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 you saw that on the park, didn't we? I mean, I think we saw a player who <coughs> who uh, who got really settled in the game. He made a big difference, I thought, to the Blues in that back three. He looked calm, and yet he looked pretty potent when he had the ball. So. Um, we've been fortunate enough to, to see him working behind the scenes and then see that transfer to the off on the field stuff, you know, particularly in Super Rugby, and he's carried that on with Harvard. So, um, and it's great seeing someone at at, um, at the age of 27 work hard and, and chase something and, and, and reap the rewards of it. Yeah, after waiting a long time to get a chance for you blokes, uh, Daniel McKenzie's had a pretty. Uh, schedule of big-time test rugby. What have you made of his, what he's produced so far and what you see from him in his time at TNL? Yeah, look, I think he's... He should be very proud of what he's done so far in the black jersey. He's... Um, you know, clearly it's it's been a learning pro process for, for him. There's been a, a few new faces in that back line, which has meant that he's probably had to take a little bit more responsibility than perhaps we would have expected. And... And overall dealt with that really, really well, you know, like it hasn't been perfect and, and he's made some errors, but he's a type of player, you, you just got to allow him to actually back himself and just have a crack at things. So, um, and, and we've seen, he's on an upward trend, I think, when you look at the tests he's played. In regards to time at 10, it, it, that, that's going to be, that's going to take a little while. And, you know, he's got the skill set to do that and it's just a matter of, it's just something he's just got to get in. He's just got to get in the driver's seat and just spend more time there. So, 
you know, it was good to have a bit of time with him in there at, at, at Brisbane, and um, he will learn a lot from that, and we'll obviously spend a bit of time discussing that, but hopefully on this tour there may be a chance for a little bit more. Would you like him to maybe start one of those, with that Barbarians or that French game? Would you, is that a possibility? There's lots of possibilities, <laughs> Nigel, but um, uh, we'll let you know. <laughs> Beautiful.